photographer Andre Designs here with a new retouch video. All right, so this image was done um, some time ago this year. I don't remember exactly when, but it was. This is the first image I've shot with the um, 85 millimeter uh, 1.8 Nikon lens. I was using the D750. Um, this was when I said, "Hey, I'm gonna do some." Um, natural light photography because I couldn't bother to you know walk up and down with the lights and stuff like that so I said hey I'm gonna challenge myself I'm gonna shoot at 1.8 and I'm just gonna use natural light so I just call up my model and she said yeah she's up for it and yeah we did it so it's time to retouch this image all right, so the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna crop this image I always crop my images and the ratio is 4 to 5 so when I upload this to um, Instagram, it just fills the entire page. All right, so um, let's let's do this. So right here should be good. I'm gonna press Enter on the keyboard. I'm looking for my pen. Okay, found it. All right, let me see. This image looks like it's not in focus, and that's fine. Not all your images are gonna be in focus, and I was shooting at 1.8, so. And uh, and there's no image stabilizer on this lens. All right, so let me just see auto, see what auto looks like. Auto looks good. All right, good. So what I'm going to do now is to open the image in Photoshop and start the editing process. All right, so as you know, the first thing I'm going to do is to do frequency separation. A 14 should be good. Um, you can check the description for this uh action and i'm gonna work on my low frequency layer and i'm gonna get my mixer brush ensure that you clear the brush sometimes there's a color right here so you just clear the brush uh, ensure that you click this option um, put your mixer brush at two percent you can put it at whatever percent you want to put it at but you don't want you don't want it to flatten your image too much all right everything here can stay the same so I'm going to go right ahead and mix the brush, mix with the brush. All right, so when you're mixing, you have to ensure that you stay in the highlighted area, mix the highlighted area, and then um, the dark areas, you go to the dark areas after. You're not going to go from uh, the lighted area to the dark areas, all right? I also, th the reason why I start doing the mixing first is because I want to be able to uh, remove the pimples from the skin and it's easier to remove it when uh, the the pimples are flat because remember when you're using the mixer brush it actually flattens the image so yeah so you flatten it and it's easier for you to clean it uh, let me zoom up a little bit like this So as I said before, not all the time your images are going to be in focus. It's not like, you know, it's going to be cropped up to her face. It's going to be zoomed out like this. So no one would actually notice that it's not fully in focus. I think it was focusing on her hair or maybe her finger, her fingers. Um, let me mix dark hair here, here as well. And honestly, I believe it's easier to shoot natural light in some circumstances. Uh, you have to shoot natural light at a certain time of the day because you don't want to shoot it when the sun is really at its peak. Unless you can find um, a shaded area and your background is not full of light. Um, when I did this shoot, it was a bit overcast. And that was perfect, actually, for me. All right, so I'm finished with the mixing. I'm going to go to the high-frequency layer, and I'm going to get my clone stamp. It's at 100% for the flow and the opacity. So I'm just going to sample, control, sample, control, click to sample. All right. I'm moving fast, but it's not good for you to move fast. You should take your time when you're editing. 
so you don't miss anything i'm only moving fast right now because i do not want the video to be too long i don't want to bored anyone so I'm moving pretty fast so look at the before and after she did her own makeup as well i didn't have a makeup artist on on set <laughs> this was actually a test shoot so um you know anytime i get a new camera or a new lens or a new light I do a test session before I actually use it on clients because I need to, you know, familiarize myself with the tool before I, you know, go out on the field and work with clients, you know. So I do a lot of test shoots when I get new equipment or if I have a new idea, I can just, you know, call a model and call a makeup artist and say, hey, I have an idea if they're free. Um, we just link up and do the session. Let me see what's happening right here. Something is happening right here. Let me see. All right. And it's always good to zoom in, zoom in on your image so you can, um, you know, get rid of all these little stuff that you can't see when it's zoomed out all right using the mixer brush when doing frequency separation is the best thing because what you do not um blur out the skin you know and that's a good thing because you want it to look natural you don't want it to look fake at all so I'm so glad the day that I found out about the mixer brush and frequency separation. And I'm still learning how to do retouching. I'm still not at the place where I want to be. But I should get there soon <laughs> if I continue practice. And I'm just so eager to help you guys, you know. I want you guys to retouch like how I retouch. So your images can look really good. All right, so look at the before and after. Before and after. I think I want to use the clone stamp here a little bit. Get rid of some of the hair from the face. All right, good. So what I'm going to do now is dodge and burn all right so let's create the dodge and burn um, layers now so go down to the adjustment um, option here click on curves uh, control J to create another one the first one is going to be called dodge second one is going to be burn All right, then for the first one, I'm going to do screen. And then for the second one, I'm going to do multiply. Then click back on the first one, control I to invert it. Click on the second one, control I to invert it as well. All right, so what you're going to do now, in order to reveal the screen or the highlight, you have to let's first get in your brush ensure that your foreground um, is set at white when you're painting on black all right so i'm just gonna zoom in a little bit the areas that you want to oh also ensure that your brush flow is at two percent or maybe one percent it all depends on you know where you want it to be or how bright you want it to be uh, the brush that you're using has to be one of those soft edges brush so look at my brush. It's a soft brush here. Uh, the hardness is down at 0%. All right, good. So what I'm going to do now is take my time and brush in the highlighted area. Look at the before, after. All right. 
here is also highlighted. Over here should have a little light as well, just a little bit over the eye. Good. Um, the forehead, just a little bit. Let me zoom out a little bit and see. Um, should have a little highlight right here as well. So let me see. Um, on the neck. Uh, right here. Good. So that's good so far. So let me go down to the burn. Uh, we're still on white because I want to reveal what's under it and it's black. Uh, all right. The nose, side of the nose. Some little area here that shows dark. So basically I'm shaping the face. So let's look at the before and after. Let me put this in a group. Shift and then Control G. Can call this D and B. And then click here. See that? Let me zoom it up a little bit more. So the image have the face now has a shape. So remember when you use the dodge when you use the um the mixer brush to flatten the image, you just do dodge and burn to give back the face a shape. All right. So that's it. I might want to clean up the image a little bit more. So let me go back to the um, high frequency layer and go back to the mixer brush. Right here I want to, well, no. Let me go down to the low frequency layer and mix out right here. Then go back to the high and then get the clone stamp and let me zoom it up a little bit. I want to, this part of the image looks a little bit sharp, so I want to blend it out a little bit. So I'm just sampling um, a different area to blend it out. So it sometimes when you think that you're finished with the um, frequency separation, you're not finished. Sometimes you're going to see a different section of the image that you need to clean after doing um, the dodge and burn. All right, that looks good. So let's look at the before and the after. Before, after. All right, uh, I'm not going to do anything right here. I'm going to leave it just as it is. But let me just clean up some more of the pimples from the face. Get rid of this pimple. All right, these. Okay. I'm going to do some behind the scenes videos so you guys can have an understanding, you know, of what's happening out there. I'm going to do a lot of natural light um, behind the scene videos so you guys can see that you don't really need a flash. You just need to know the correct settings and the right time of day to go out and do your sessions. I like it when it's overcast. I don't really need a lot of sun. I just need it. When it's overcast, it's actually diffused. The sun is diffused and it, it works perfect. All right, so what I'm going to do now is color the image, all right? I'm going to go into Camera Raw to make these adjustments. So I'm going to make sure that I click on the top layer here. I'm going to press, well, you know what? Let's just go here. Oh, I have to create uh, a new layer first of this image. So I'm going to hold on and Control, Shift, Alt, and E. And then I'm going to make two of them. And then I'm going to go up to Camera Raw. I'm going to click on Auto to see what Auto looks like. Um, looks good. But I think I want to do it. 
think I want to make my own adjustments. All right, so I'm going to put in a little black in the image so it looks rich. For the shadows, I'm going to pull it out. Um, for the contrast, I'm going to pull it about uh, four. So all these adjustments, you'll do it. You'll just do it, you know, to how it please you. Uh. So all these adjustments, you're just going to do it to your liking, basically. Um, let me get a little bit more exposure on the image. Right. Um, all right, so let's see now. I'm going to go over to my hue, where the colors are, hue adjustment. And I'm going to make some adjustment to the color in the background. So I can get it green if I want it to be green. And I can get it um, yellow and green and orange. And all that's a different color. <laughs> all right, so I'm just going to put it right here so I'm just playing around with the colors actually I don't really know what colors I want so I'm just playing around the colors um, so this looks good all right don't think I need to do anything more with that let me go back over here to the shadows and maybe bring it back in a little bit um, the white over I know I put the white at about eight um i don't need to add any vibrancy to it or any saturation because it already you know i already made the adjustment in the u adjustment here all right so that's it for that section of the image all right so this image is actually finished <laughs> there's nothing else i need to do with this image all right, so I'm going to save the image for Instagram and also for web. So go to File, Export, Save for Web. I normally save um, the image size 1200 for the width. Um, yeah, this image will load pretty fast when you upload to your website. And also, it keeps the quality of the image when you upload it to Instagram. So save. I'm going to take a look at it now. Good. So that's the image. Alright guys, so thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get notification each time I upload a new video. Follow me on Instagram at Andre Designs and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.